In this training video, we're going to go over the collimation procedure for the Skywatcher 8-inch telescopes. This system is pretty robust and doesn't often need to be collimated, but if it's out of alignment and the images are no good, this is the procedure you'll go through to do that. We're going to go through the collimation procedure of the, the telescope. Here you see it's set up. Nothing's on it other than the telescope is on the base. You don't need any of the wires or anything else. If it's there, it's okay. But uh, what we're going to do is to work on this portion here. That's where the eyepiece would normally go. And instead of an eyepiece, we're going to put in a bracket to hold the laser collimator. This is the first piece you're going to put in there. It's a little adapter bracket and the one and a quarter inch eyepiece holder. This goes straight into the base of the telescope. Here into that socket and then you have the two screws on the side you tighten down to hold it in place. Once you've got that, then you're ready for the laser collimator. We're going to cover the collimation of the telescope, and in your kit, kit there's this box. And when you open it up, you see inside a battery and a collimator. There might be an instruction manual in there, too. And this is how you have to store it. We don't want to store the battery inside the collimator. So, you take these two items out of the box and you don't need the box anymore so you can set that aside and then you unscrew the back cap the tip on the small end and turn it towards me you can see the battery will go in there and then you put the negative end in first and then you put the lid back on and then you tighten it. Just be a little careful not to cross thread the cap that goes on. And then once it gets tight enough the laser will shine. Just shine it on your hand. And you can see that's active. Now if you unscrew it a little bit it turns the laser off. You probably want to do that while you're setting up so you don't accidentally shine it in somebody's eye. Now you see the holder from the side and we're going to look at, and at some of the details of the laser collimator. So on here you see two thin strips of rubber. Those actually will compress and squeeze out to hold it in place. The thing that will compress it is the knurled knob there as right now it's loose but as you tighten it it will make that the rubber expand and hold it in place. You also see a bullseye pattern that's um, on the laser collimator. That's important to see later. Right now all you need to know is that you want to be able to see that, that bullseye pattern from the back end of the telescope. So now you can see it just slide, it slides in e easily into the holder. And now it will spin freely because it's not tight. In fact, you want to spin it so that the bullseye pattern is to the back. And now you go in and just simply tighten the knob, the knurled knob. And you can start to feel some resistance as you get a little more and more tight. And you don't have to get it super tight. It's just enough so that it doesn't want to wiggle around or rotate. Now we're looking at the telescope from the, the end that points towards the sky. We want to give you a guided tour of the things that you're going to be adjusting to do the collimation. So the first thing that we're going to be tweaking is going to be the alignment of the secondary mirror, which you can see the secondary mirror down in the cage there and it's on a housing and on the back side of that housing are three knobs. Those three are the knobs that you're going to adjust to change the tilt of the collimator. Now looking at it from the back end of the telescope 
You've got the primary mirror inside the housing. And there are six screws that control the placement of that and orientation of that mirror. And they're, they come in pairs. So you'll see a Phillips head screw for three places, and then right next to it is a hex head screw, which is down inside the hole. And those we will be adjusting those when we change the primary. You can also see at the other end of the telescope, you can see the, the laser collimator is there, and you can see that the bullseye pattern is coming back. That's so when you're adjusting the primary, you'll be able to see what you're doing for the guiding spot. And we'll demonstrate that in just a minute. To get started, we're going to just turn the laser on. Now it's on, and if you look carefully on the secondary mirror, you'll see there's a red spot indicating and that's where the laser light is coming through. Looking at it from the top end of the telescope down in with the laser on, you can now see the primary mirror, and there's lots of reflections and lots of things to be confused about. The thing you want to look at here is the little donut in the middle. It looks black here, but if you shine a flashlight on it down in there, it's actually white. That defines the center of the mirror. And then you can see to the a little bit up and to the right is a bright red dot. That's the laser that's coming down off the secondary for its first pass into the system. And when it's properly aligned, that dot will be right in the middle of the donut. Now, to adjust that, you go to the three screws and then you start moving them. And you're kind of pushing and pulling and you want to keep it tight as you go because when you let go and you're in the final location, you want that to hold still. So Brian here is tweaked the, tweak the um, position. You can see that laser light moving around. And as he manipulates these, it will move around and get closer and closer to the donut. Now this takes a while. It takes a little bit of finesse. You have to be patient. But eventually, when you get it all aligned, it'll be centered in the donut. Now this is what it looks like when it gets close. And as the laser gets onto that little white donut down there in the bottom, it reflects back quite a bit, so it looks really bright. That doesn't mean it's aligned. It just means that you're on the donut. And as you continue to work this and put it inside, it'll actually get fainter again. And all you got to do is get it inside the donut. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered in there. But if you can just get it so that it falls inside the donut, you're good. Now, that probably takes as much work to get it this last little bit as it did to go from the big adjustment down to the donut. Now it's perfectly centered in the donut, and it's ready to go. And again, remember, when you get it to this point, those three screws need to be tight and it be centered. If one of those screws is loose, as you pick it up, move it around, slew across the sky, it'll change the collimation and then your image won't be any good anymore. So let's go to the next step, and that is to adjust to make sure that the primary mirror is set correctly. For that, we go to the other end. Look at it from the other end of the telescope. So in your gear, there's a small little plastic baggie that was in the, in the tool bag which has a screwdriver and some wrenches. So you need a few of those to um, properly align the telescope. So the, the Phillips screwdriver. And then there are, there's, there's one of the hex key wrenches that you need. I believe it's the smaller, smaller one. Okay, so now with those two tools, you can now adjust the primary. So we will start doing that. But first, let's have a look at what's going on. So now that we've gotten it somewhat close with the secondary, now we're looking at the secondary mirror again, and you see two spots. 
So the first one, the brighter of the two, is the spot that we saw before. But now there's a second spot. That's the reflection of the laser off of the primary mirror coming back up. And what we want to do is to adjust the primary mirror orientation so that those two spots look like they're in the same place. Now, that's only for rough alignment. The other part of this is you look in the bullseye and uh, line up the dot there, but we're not close enough for that part of the process yet. So now we're looking at the back end of the telescope again, and we're going to be adjusting the primary mirror. So these six screws hold it in place. To free it up so that you can move it around, the first thing you do is slightly loosen the lock screws. Those are the little hex head screws. So you put a tool in there and you give it maybe a quarter of a turn, and that takes the pressure off. You don't want to move it too much, or you lose kind of your reference. And you don't, you just can't move this much at all, or you'll cause all sorts of problems. Now, now you're free to adjust the positioning of the mirror with the Phillips head screwdriver in those three screws. And you will tighten and loosen those to change the dot. So let's have a look and see what the dot's doing on the secondary. Now you can see the two dots, and as you change, you know, one screw at a time, and you say, okay, that one makes it a little closer, and then you try another one. Oh, no, that went the wrong way. So you just keep adjusting it. And if you've moved the screws too far, you may have to come back with the, with the hex knobs and give yourself a little bit more room. And that works in the direction where you are um, moving the mirror back towards you. So you just keep fiddling with those three screws until you get the, the two dots to coalesce. Here we're getting kind of close and what's the, impo the important thing to watch when you start getting close is on the bullseye. Now you can see that the light laser light is down, hitting the secondary, hitting the primary, bouncing off, going back to the secondary, and then coming back up the thing that's generating the laser. Now you see a bright spot there that's on the bullseye pattern. The fact that it's on the bullseye means, and it's, you see it brightly coming back at you, means that it's not yet quite aligned. There's a hole in the center of the bullseye, and when the laser goes down the hole, the light disappears, or mostly disappears, and you know that you're aligned. So when you get close, you now start looking at the bullseye as you tweak the position of the second, the primary mirror. So when you finally get it to the right place, as you make that final last tweak, the laser beam will disappear down the hole. And then you just see the little spike pattern left. And now you know you're adjusted. And then you go back in and tighten up the lock screws. And you just do it a little bit at a time, going around in a circular pattern. Because as you tighten that down, it's going to make it move just a little bit, or can. And you just want to keep an eye on it as you're tightening it and make sure that you're not causing it to go out of alignment as you tighten that screw. Now that we're aligned, there's only one dot on the secondary mirror and then we're done with the laser collimator. So you turn the laser light off, then unloosen it out of the holder, and then pull it out. So now you've seen the procedure for collimating the Skywatcher 8-inch telescope. It's a little scary at first. With some practice, you can get pretty good at it, but it still takes a bit of patience. Just remember, when you're all done with the laser collimator, please remember to take the battery out of the collimator and then put it away in its protective box for use the next time around.